everyone, thanks for coming back to All Booked Up. Let's pick up where we left off in The Tale of Despero with Chapter 20, A View from the Chandelier. There was a banquet hall, a most beautiful and ornate chandelier. The crystals that hung from it caught the light of the candles on the tables and the light from the face of the laughing princess. They danced to the rhythm of the minstrel's music, swaying back and forth, twinkling and beckoning. What better place to view all this glory, all this beauty? There was so much laughing and singing and juggling that nobody noticed Roscuro crawling up a table leg and onto the table. From there, flung himself onto the lowest branch of the chandelier. Hanging by one paw, he swung back and forth, admiring the spectacle below him. The smells of the food, the sound of the music, the light, the light, the light. Amazing, unbelievable. Roscuro smiled and shook his head. Unfortunately, a rat can hang from a chandelier for only so long before he is discovered. This would be true at even the loudest party. Reader, do you know who it was that spotted him? You're right, the sharp-eyed Princess P. A rat, she shouted, a rat is hanging from the chandelier. The party, as I have noted, was loud. The minstrels were strumming and singing. The people were laughing and eating. The man with the jingle cap and was juggling and jingling. No one, in the midst of all this merriment, heard the pee. No one except Roscuro. Rat. He had never been aware of what an ugly word that was. Rat. In the middle of all the beauty, it immediately began, became clear that it was an extremely distasteful syllable. Rat. A curse, an insult, and a word totally without light. And not until he heard it from the mouth of the princess did Roscuro realize that he did not like being a rat, that he did not want to be a rat. The revelation hit Roscuro with such force that it made him lose his grip on the chandelier. The rat reader fell. But alas, he fell right directly into the queen's bowl of soup. Oh my goodness. Chapter 21 the queen's last words. The queen loved soup. She loved soup more than anything in the world, except for the princess P and the king. And because the queen loved it, soup was served in the castle for every banquet, every lunch, and every dinner. And what soup it was! Cook's love and admiration for the queen and her palate moved the broth that she concocted from a level of mere food to a high art. On this particular day, for the bank particular banquet, Cook had outdone herself. The soup was a masterwork, a delicate mingling of chicken, watercress, and garlic. Roscuro, as he surfaced from the bottom of the queen's capacious bowl, could not help but taking a few appreciative sips. Lovely, he said, distracted for a moment from the misery of his existence. Delightful! See, shouted the pea, see? She stood. She pointed her finger right at Roscuro. It is a rat. I told you it was a rat. He was hanging from the chandelier, and now here he is in Mama's soup. The rat stopped playing the uh, the musicians stopped playing their guitars. The jugglers stopped juggling. The noble people stopped eating. The queen looked at Roscuro. Roscuro looked at the queen. Reader, in the spirit of honesty, I must utter a difficult and unsavory truth. Rats are not beautiful creatures. They are not even cute. They are really rather nasty beasts, particularly if one happens to appear in your bowl of soup with pieces of watercress clinging to its whiskers. There was a long moment of silence, and then Roscuro said to the queen, I beg your pardon. In response, the queen flung her soup in the air, made an incredible noise. A noise that it was in no way worthy of Queen. A noise somewhere between the neigh of a horse and the squeal of a pig. And then she said, There is a rat in my soup. The Queen was really a simple soul and all and always her whole life had done nothing except state the overly obvious. She died as she lived. There is a rat in my soup were the last words she uttered. She clutched her cheek and her chest and fell backwards. Her royal chair hit the floor with a thump, 
when the banquet hall exploded. Spoons were dropped, chairs were flung back. Save her, thundered the king. You must save her. All of the king's men ran to try and rescue the queen. Rosciro climbed out of the bowl of soup. He felt that, under the circumstances, it would be best if he left. And as he crawled across the tablecloth, he remembered the words of the prisoner in the dungeon. His regret that he did not look back at his daughter as he left her. And so Rosciro turned. He looked back. And he saw that the princess was glaring at him, her eyes filled with disgust and anger. Go back to the dungeon, was what the look she gave him said. Go back to the darkness where you belong. This reader broke Rosciro's heart. Do you think that rats do not have hearts? Wrong. All living things have a heart. And the heart of any living thing can be broken. If the rat had not looked over his shoulder, perhaps his heart would not have broken. And it is possible, then, I would not have a story to tell. But, reader, he did look. Chapter 22. He puts his heart together again. Rescuro hurried from the banquet hall. A rat, he said. He put a paw over his heart. I am a rat. And there is no light for rats. There will be no light for me. The king's men were still bent over the queen. The king was still shouting, save her, save her. The queen was still dead, of course, when Mascaro encountered the queen's royal soup spoon laying on the floor. I will have something beautiful, he said aloud. I am a rat, but I will have something beautiful. I will have a crown of my own. He picked up the spoon. He put it on his own head. Yes, said Mascaro, I will have something beautiful, and I will have revenge, both things, somehow. There are those hearts, reader, that never mend again once they are broken. Or if they do mend, they heal themselves in a crooked and lopsided way, as if sewn together by a careless craftsman. Such was the fate of Chius Roscuro. His heart was broken. Picking up the spoon and placing it on his head, speaking of revenge, these things helped him to put his heart together again. But it was, alas, put together wrong. Where is the rat? shouted the king. Find the rat! If you want me, muttered Roscaro as he left the banquet hall, I will be in the dungeon in the darkness. Chapter 23. Consequences. There were, of course, dire consequences of Roscaro's behavior. Every action reader, no matter how small, has a consequence. For instance, the young Roscaro gnawed on Gregory the Jailer's rope, and because he gnawed on the rope, a match was lit in his face. And because a match was lit in his face, and be, uh, his soul was set afire. The rat's soul was set afire because of this. He journeyed upstairs, seeking the light. Upstairs in the banquet hall, the princess pea spotted him and called out the word rat. And because of this, Roscaro fell in the queen's soup. And because the rat fell in the queen's soup, the queen died. You can see, can't you? How everything is related to everything else. You can see quite qu clearly how every action has a consequence. For instance, if reader, you will indulge me and allow me to continue this meditation on consequences. Because the queen died while eating soup, the heartbroken king outlawed soup. And because soup was outlawed, so were all the instruments involved in the making and eating of soup spoons and bowls and kettles. These things were collected from all the people of the kingdom of Dor, and they were piled in the dungeon. And because Roscuro was dazzled by the light of one match and journeyed upstairs and fell in the queen's soup and the queen died, the king ordered the death of every rat in the land. The king's men went bravely into the dungeon to kill the rats. But the thing about killing rats is you must first find a rat. And if a rat does not want to be found, reader, he will not be found. The king's men succeeded only in getting lost in the dungeon's torturous mazes. Some of them, in fact, did not ever find their way out again and died there in the dark heart of the castle. And so the killing of all rats was not successful. And in desperation, King Philip declared that rats are illegal. He declared them outlaws. This, of course, was a ridiculous law as rats are outlaws to begin with. 
How can you outlaw an outlaw? It was a waste of time and energy, but still, the king officially decreed that all rats in the kingdom of Dor were outlaws and should be treated as such. When you are a king, you make as many ridiculous laws as you like, and that is what being a king is all about. But reader... We must not forget that King Philip loved the queen, and without her he was lost. This is the danger of loving. No matter how powerful you are, no matter how many kingdoms you rule, you cannot stop those you love from dying. Making soup illegal, outlawing rats, these things soothe the poor king's heart, and so we must forgive him. And what of the outlawed rats? What of one outlawed rat in particular? What of Chiaroscuro? In the darkness of the dungeon, he sat in his nest with the spoon atop his head. He set to work fashioning for himself a knightly cape made out of a scrap of red tablecloth. And as he worked, old one-eared Botticelli Remorso sat next to him, swinging his locket back and forth, back and forth, saying, You see what comes from a rat going upstairs? I hope that you've learned your lesson. Your job in this world is to make others suffer. Yes, muttered Roscuro. Yes, that is exactly what I intend to do. I will make the princess suffer for how she looked at me. And as Roscuro worked and planned, the jailer, Gregory, held tight to his rope and made his own way through the darkness. In, the, in a dank cell, the prisoner who once held the red tablecloth now had nothing. Spent his days and nights weeping quietly. High above the dungeons, upstairs in the castle, a small mouse stood alone one evening as his brothers and sisters sniffed for crumbs. He stood with his head cocked to one side, listening to a sweet sound he did not yet have a name for. There will be consequences of the mouse's love for music. You, reader, already know some of those consequences. Because of the music, the mouse would find his way to a princess. He would fall in love. And speaking of consequences, the same evening that Despero stood inside the castle hearing music for the first time, outside the castle, in the gloom of dusk, more consequences drew near. A wagon, driven by the king's soldiers, piled high with spoons and bowls and kettles, was making its way for the castle. And beside the soldier, there was a young girl, with ears that looked like nothing so much as pieces of cauliflower stuck on either side of her head. The girl's name, reader, was Miggery So, and though she did not yell it yet, know it yet, she would be instrumental in helping the rat work his revenge. And that is the end of Roscuro's story for now.